Hello, welcome to the West Ham Way YouTube. Myself, Mark Carlaw and Riley Finch. Mate, it's a strange time now. We've got um, a couple of players at the club that seem to be wanting out of West Ham. We're in the January transfer window, so there's always going to be that bit of speculation, but this seems a bit more credible. The first one is certainly credible and certainly looks like it's going to happen, which is Craig Dawson. We've known for quite a while. X reported this back in June uh, last year at the beginning of the summer transfer window that Dawson had made it clear to the club that he wanted to move on. The reason he wants to move on, by the way, is personal reasons, is to be family. I, I kind of know roughly what's going on a little bit, but yeah, it's, it's certainly a reason that he needs to go. Um, so I kind of, I, I actually believe we should have just let him go in the summer. I, I know it sounds a bit, I don't really know why we've kept him really. You kind of think we had enough, we've had enough time in the summer to, to deal with it. We could have got a replacement in and let him go. I don't really see the point of keeping people at the club that don't want to be there. It's not like he doesn't love West Ham. Apparently, this is the best time of his career, but he wants to move on and we've held him back. And now we're in a bit of a predicament now where it's now getting quite critical. I think he's even suggested that, you know, he's, he could even hang up his boots if he doesn't leave. So it's it's a quite a serious situation West Ham has to deal with. But it looks like he's going to go. Well, what's your thoughts on the whole thing? Are you, are you, do you think West Ham have done the right thing by keeping him? Or, or do you think we just need to sort of just cut our losses now and, get, and, and replace him? No, I mean, I think that um, from a footballing point of view, it made no sense to get rid of Dawson in summer when we couldn't get a replacement. I, I think we could have tried a bit harder to get a replacement, but mm. um, realistically, we, I mean, you know, it's not like Dawson is young. We'll need a replacement for him next year or even the year after anyway. So it's not yes. like it comes as a huge shock to West Ham that we would need to replace him. Mm. Um, but I think just from a, just from a man management point of view, um, keeping someone at the club who, just doesn't want to be there. I can imagine has um, shown that he has probably struggled with the commute uh, in the, what, three years he's been with us now. Um, yeah. I can't imagine this is the first time that this is coming out. And I think the it, it's just a testament to his character that he turns up to the training ground every day. Um, mm. Also with his, you know, I think last year he was, he was having injections just to play every game and he was a, a regular starter for us, both in Europe and in the Premier League due to injuries. Yeah. So I think it's a testament to his character that he's, you know, shown how good he is. He, he's, he's never wavered. And I think realistically West Ham needs to kind of repay that. You know, he, he hasn't done a pie yet. He hasn't refused to play. He yeah. hasn't tried to force his way out of the club. Um, and I can imagine this has been something that's been on his mind for the last couple of years. I think just to repay... Um, his hard work, uh, I, I feel like you probably should let him go. But then, you know, in, in these games where Dawson has started, would it be... And I think, you know, how much stronger would Wolves be with a player like Dawson at the back? You know, if we, we're playing yeah. we're playing Wolves today, would you not be terrified of Mikel Antonio up top against us and a little bit more wary of Dawson than, say, like... I don't even know if they got the centre-back these days. I think they lost... Well, they lost they actually Cody Cody back. I, I don't know how if he'd fit straight into their squad, to be honest. I think it's more purely to the location for him more than anything. I mean, obviously, he's, he's, he's still a good footballer. Um, I do know what you mean. There's all sort of two sides to it, isn't there? So you've got the first of all side when you're talking about Dawson is, yes, it, well, my argument is that we should have probably looked to replace him in the summer. We should have granted him the move then. They've kept him on. And you have to argue, is this a reason, one of the reasons for our low morale with, with the players? I'm not blaming Dawson in any way. But having people at the club that don't want to be there doesn't help. It doesn't help the mood when you've got someone walking in, probably making it quite vocal to the other players. They don't really want to be there. They're probably getting a bit pissed off. I don't see how that helps. Um, we'll come on to Antonio in a minute. That's a totally different matter. Yes, I, And you're right, there is that. But then the other side of the coin now is, well, OK, West Ham are going to look to do a deal with uh, uh, to, to let uh, Dawson go. It appears that that's going to happen. But now we're, it's a relegation rival. And I hate saying that because let's call it Premier League rival. I hate saying that word. But... It, that's the situation, isn't it? So they're probably thinking, well, do we really want to do deal leadings with Wolves at the moment? But it appears I think they're going to. Um, I just think they could have dealt with it so much better. We had, we had plenty of time. We could have, could have dealt with this a while ago. It seems like now it's got a bit critical. But now we're sort of chasing our towers, trying to get a replacement in. It looks like, I know Michael Keane's been mentioned. I know you're <laughs> thrilled about um, and you can't wait to see him in the club in blue. But don't forget, though, we did say this about Dawson. I, I remember, you know, like everyone, we all said the same and thought, oh, what are we doing? And it turned out to be yeah, good. I'm well, not exactly going to say. And he only would be a backup. Don't forget, it would be a backup player. But the difference is, what I, I had um, preconceived notions of Craig Dawson from his time mm. at Watford. I've seen Michael Keane play, so it's a bit different. Um, I've actually seen how bad he is, whereas Dawson, I just kind of assumed he was bad because he was in a relegated Watford side, He's old. He didn't really, he was, you know, he hadn't really got a big move in a while. Um, and he also cost like, you know, it was a loan. It wasn't even a buy. Um, 
So, but, but but Michael Keane, I can I, I definitely don't think he'll be surprising any West Ham fans, mate. And you can clip it and make me look stupid, but I promise you, I don't. I will. Think I'm, I'm looking forward to it, mate, because he's going to be he's going to be our next cult hero. I'm telling you. Um, another player we got linked with on the back of this as well. And I don't know if you saw it. Was the Axel? Was it Dizarzi? Is it? Is that how you pronounce his name? Dizarzi, yeah. Yeah, I see. So that's he's considered a long term replacement. So I think West Ham, the ultimate, what West Ham really wanted for Dawson was to keep him for the rest of the season and let him go for free in the summer. Uh, and then Zazi, I think, is the one that the club are looking at as a long term replacement, someone that can come in and, you know, because I think he's 24, I believe. So that would be someone that we, I know, as bear in mind, it's, he's, he's going to cost between sort of 20 to 30 million pounds. So he's not going to be someone we're going to be signing in January. But it looks as though that situation with Dawson's become quite critical that he needs to leave so we do need to deal with it so it, I imagine it would be someone like Keane will come in as a, a short-term offer maybe because they just need to they need to get it sorted out one way or another um so it's a shame I'm really gutted because I love Dawson but I do understand the reasons for him going and, you, and at the end of the day family is the most important thing and he needs to if he needs to go and go home for those reasons then that's completely right I just think that the club probably should have dealt with it sooner rather than, than than now because it feels now we've sort of got a gun to our head and we're trying to run around and get a replacement in which is not ideal but and, um, and also of course we're recording this prior by the way to the Wolves game so uh, Dawson's out of the squad and that's for that reason because he can't play <coughs> let's be honest once you hear that he's not in the squad because of you know mental reasons whatever he's not, not in the right headspace to play then you kind of know that the situation is that he's leaving so it is a real shame because he's a bit of a cult hero but I don't think he'll leave under a cloud at all I think the fans would be absolutely welcome about with open arms he'd be you know well, after he's finished the club he's gonna have great respect because he's been he's been a brilliant signing for us hasn't he ultimately I mean you know, I don't anyone could have predicted how good he's, he would have been for West Ham no I mean I think he's been an absolute cult hero to be honest and um at times in his career he's, he's put in some of the best centre-back performances I've seen for a West Ham player Bearing mm. in mind, by the way, I was born in 2001. So, you know, oh, I'm, not, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to recount, you know, all these other centre-backs we've probably had over the years. Mm. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite as old as Mark. We probably saw Bobby Moore playing in his prime. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. But I, he has been a cult hero and, and I think he's just been, a, he's been an absolute servant, hasn't he? He's been a t- and I think he probably has been a good shepherd to the young players. I can imagine he's been uh, an experienced head at times. And I'm mm. glad to see him leave. But I also just think, you know, if we were to get in someone like Harry Souter, who I don't think we'll get any more uh, from Stoke City, who played really mm. well in the World Cup, or Tosin Adarabayo from mm. Fulham, which I think we've also moved to late on. Um, yeah. he, he, I'd still take a, a punt on Nat Phillips. I'm a big fan of Nat Phillips. I think he could potentially be a good backup centre-back. Because realistically, you know, you've got Zuma and, again, both ahead of Dawson. If he's not playing week in, week out, he's the most vital player in the squad. Why not let him leave and just sort of, you know, have an easier life? Absolutely. And also the option as well. We've got, you know, we've got youngsters that are coming through and doing quite well. So it's always an opportunity as well. But yeah, it is, yeah, like you say, hats off to Dawson. He's been a brilliant player for us. And, I, you know, when he does go, which it looks like it's imminently, that wish him the absolute best and hope it all goes really well for him. On the other side now, we've got Mikel Antonio. So this one's a bit of an odd one because I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed with it, really. I'm actually, it's actually irking me, um, is that, Mikel Antonio has been brilliant for West Ham. There's no choice about it. We're probably one of our uh, up there, one of the best signs we've made in the last sort of you know ten years of the club. You know, he's come from Nottingham Forest in the Championship and it's been brilliant. It's been absolutely brilliant, giving us so many brilliant memories. He's our top, you know, record Premier League goal scorer. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more. He's 33 now. He's let's be honest. He's not really a striker, really. He's he he is. He's very, very good at running the line, running the channels. He's very, very good at bullying defenders and getting in their faces. He's not a finisher. We've known that forever, really. He doesn't really know. He's, he's been pretty, he's pretty shocking that he's finishing, really. He never keeps a cool head. He always seems to just panic and blast it as hard as he can, wherever he can. But at the same time, I appreciate that's not his forte. But I've never really seen him as a proper, proper striker, striker. Although he has done an okay job. I can't deny that. So last season, he said quite clearly that he was annoyed by the amount of games he was playing, annoyed at the pressure put on his shoulders. And he kind of alluded, I think he was alluding to the fact that why he wasn't scoring, as if to sort of say, I've got so much pressure on my shoulders, you know, I've got no one to take my place. So it's just me every game. And I agree with that. You know, it was ridiculous that we had no other striker. And considering the fact that he's a player that's very injury prone as well, although I would say he's been pretty good the last couple of years. But prior to that, he was ridiculous, the amount of hamstring injuries he had. So then he kind of called on the club to sort this out and to say, well, you know, go go and get a striker. I want competition. 
He's then got the competition, and if anything, he's moaning about it now, having competition, and annoyed the fact that Skamaka well, seems to be picked ahead of him. Where has this report come from, by the way, that he's like moaning about having a second? Like, is there a quote from him, or is it just like? No, not... no, I don't think he's actually vocally come out and said anything too. But I know he he did come out in a, an interview and said that it, he's not happy about not being number one, and that it's his responsibility to get his shirt back. That's how he worded it. He said, Skamaka's number one at the moment and I, it's my job to get it back, which is fine because that's kind of, you know, what you want to hear. You know, I, I want to get my show. But personally, I actually feel like saying, well, actually, um, you should be saying, well, look, I'm, a, I'm getting on a little bit now. I don't, I'm a team player. I want to help out where I can help out. If I can start, great. If I have to come off the bench, great. The fact no, I, kind think, of- I think that's harsh, to be honest, Mark. I think, I think really? as a... Yeah, I think as a striker, you're always going to, you know, we're not talking about like, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo at United here. He's not, he's not got that much of an ego. You know, he's not going to sit there and tell the manager, I should be starting week in, week out. But, you know, of course, he's only 32. Of course, he's going to be wanting playing week in, week out against Skamaka and he's going to relish the competition. But I just think this whole thing will be blown out of proportion because I haven't seen one quote where Michel Antonio said, well, I'm so sick of not playing. Why is Skamaka ahead of me? And then all of a sudden, yeah. I'm getting these reports all over Twitter and everywhere. Everyone saying, oh, you know, Michel Antonio's throwing his like toys out the pram because he's not playing games every week. And I just don't think that's the case. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, from what I understand it, I don't think he's overly happy with the situation. I think that's what's being reported behind the scenes. I think X has kind of alluded to that's what's going on. I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but apparently he's not overly happy and would be quite open to a move away from the club because he's not happy with the situation. Now, the only thing that irks me about it, and I, 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 don't, I, don't, I know what you're saying, and I, but I just feel like at, at his age, I just feel like we'll start delivering then. You know, this is a bloke that hasn't scored, you know, and when, when was the last time Antonio's been in decent form and scoring goals? He's, I mean, he's had so many opportunities. Kamaka's been injured for a fair bit this season and he's been pretty poor, Antonio. Don't get me wrong, he works hard. He does work hard. I'll never knock him for that. But his he, shooting is horrendous. I mean, really poor. And I just feel like saying, well, you know, if, if you turn around and said, well, look, I scored 15 goals last season. I've already scored five this season. You know, I'm, I'm banging the goals in when I'm called upon. Why am I not number one choice? I'd, I'd, I would really then go, yeah, he's got a very valid point. But yeah, I don't think he has a point. I, I, I think it's obvious that Skamaka has to be ahead of is him. That, is that not a team issue? As opposed, I mean, look at Jared Bowen. You know, it does, does a player have a, a a merit to start over Jared Bowen? If Jared Bowen was on the bench and he was saying, Do you know what, I'm a bit fed up and not starting, would you say, well, you know, you need to score goals then? Because it's, it's a team issue. As a team, we haven't scored many goals at all. Yeah, it's not like Skamaka's on like six or seven goals and he's firing them in, you know, he's struggled mm. at times for form as well. So I do think maybe we've no, been a tiny bit harsh in terms possibly. of, I do, I do think if he, if he, if it's true that he wants to move away because mm. he's not willing to fight for his place at West Ham, he wants to be the star striker week in, week out. Then I do think, I yeah, I do think that is something we should criticise him for, especially if he's willing to join a Premier League rival. I mean, mm. would, would you call Antonio a West Ham legend? <sighs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I'd call him. A, that's what I, said. I, I don't know. I, I think he deserves far more credit than he deserves. I mean, he's been at the club for many years now. I think he joined in 2015, if I remember rightly, somewhere around that sort of time. So you're talking what seven years at the club? Um, it was around that time, wasn't it? It was. It was, it was around. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was, was 2015. It? 2015, wasn't it? He joined. So he's been at the club for a long time. You know, he's as I said, he's a Premier League record goal scorer, and that will, you know, is an incredible record because in the fact he's over to Paolo Di Canio. So and and he's given us some brilliant memories. I'm and, and I'm and I really and also I really like the guy. Like he's got such a good personality and a real you know good spirit about him. And he does lift a mood. He's got a great smile. I love his interviews and stuff. I, I, I'm don't get me wrong. I'm a really big fan of Mikel Antonio. I really am. But I don't like this idea that he's got he's got the hump. Like like you kind of alluded to. I don't like that idea that he's, if he's got the hump about not playing enough. I feel like saying, well, you know, for God's sake, like you. You're hardly bang banging the goals in, Mick. You know, oh, you're I, not really. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's a team effort, and you're right. But he doesn't take the chances when he does get them. He doesn't. He's, he's, I mean, even against. Um, let me get my facts right here. Was it against? I think he had it? a chance oh. against Leeds that he that yeah, header scored. was it the one with the cross and the header, and he just totally, so, yeah. he totally fluffed it. And I just thought, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean you're supposed? To, and then you're banging on, the, you know. And if you are going behind the scenes, going, well, I should be number, well, I should be getting picked number ahead of Skamaka. I'm thinking, well, that's your chance, Mick. You, you've got to start. You've got to start showing you're a striker. You can't just keep missing chance after chance after chance. And then go, but I'm a really good striker. I mean, I, I mean, I, I haven't got the stats in front of me. I should have prepared it a little bit better. But I, you know, in terms of his goal scoring, I can't remember the last time he really was on a decent run for goals. You know, what I mean, it's, he had a period when he first got called to that number one, uh, number nine, sorry, position, and that number nine shirt. He seemed to relish it and really, you know, when we started that um, second season when we started Europe, he was just really good form. 
But that just seems to have totally dwindled. And I, and I appreciate you are right. It's a team effort. It's not as if you can go, everyone's playing wonderfully apart from Antonio. That's not the case. But you do sometimes feel like, I don't know. I I, I just think it should be a little bit more gracious and brilliant. I'm a little bit older now. I've been calling on the club to get a replacement, you know, get, get some competition. I've, they've brought in a very good striker. Now, as you say, I appreciate that he hasn't come out publicly and necessarily said I'm sick of it, but I don't like the idea that he's quite keen to move on now. I feel like saying, well, if, 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 and it seems to be alluding to the fact he doesn't like the situation playing second fiddle to and uh, Skamaka, which I, I just, I struggled to get my head around I, a little bit I because I, I thought he'd be quite grateful for it, really. I wouldn't honest. even say Moyes has a number one, though, because, you know, often Antonio's picked ahead of Skamaka and then Skamaka's picked, like, it yeah. doesn't seem like he knows which one he wants to start if they're both completely fit, completely fresh. So, mm. I, 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 personally, I think it's a little bit of media spinning. I think he's been linked. I think Wolves have gone in for him mm. and, you know, they've kind of just spun this little story out of it. I, I personally don't think that Antonio is throwing his toys at the pram because he's not playing week in, week out, because I think it's, it's honestly better for him. He's going to be fresher, sharper. Uh, coming off the oh, bench, I agree. Uh, so, that, that's my point. I, I, that's what I thought. I thought Mikel Antonio would be quite happy with the situation because it means that he's going to get a bit more rest. He's not necessarily going to play ninety minutes week in week out, especially with European football coming back in March. However, do do bear in mind, Riley, that we did make a bid for in the series, um, and that was well, it wasn't rejected; it was accepted, but the player rejected it, and it looks like we're going out for a striker. So that kind of shows the impression that West Ham might be looking to offload Antonio, or it, it certainly sends a message that he's not delivering. Possibly even to both of our strikers. Who knows? I mean, you know, saying, well, you know, we need to get someone in because you two are not delivering well enough at the moment and they're not not banging the goals in. And Moyes even said it in his press conference yesterday that the, the we're not scoring enough goals this season. That's the, the biggest issue that we've got. We're just simply not looking potent at all in front of goal. We need someone, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not exactly agreeing with that comment because I think we've got far, I think the issues at the moment are widespread, not just on the striker front. But I think that kind of shows where the, the club's mindset is with Antonio. Maybe they are looking to offload him. Um, I don't know. But it's certainly an interesting one. I don't think he'll go, though. I'd, I'd be very, very surprised if West Ham sell him in January. I, I don't see that happening. But it kind of looks like it. The, now these conversations are happening, you kind of get the feeling this is po- probably his last season at West Ham. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I, mean, I probably would assume so. 32 years old. He's been at the club for like seven years. I could see him going to maybe like a mid-table club. No disrespect to him, but I think he probably, if he wants to start, he's probably going to be a mid-table club. And again, you know, as you as you do say, it does look like we're trying to get a second striker in, maybe like Berrett and Diaz, and Nasiri, uh, Moffi, like we have been linked to quite a few players. But um, just to kind of finish off then, Mark, with Dawson and, and Antonio, are you saying keep or sell for those two? Um, I definitely think we've got to let Dawson go. That's just because I just think it's the morally right thing to do. But having said that, X did make it very, very clear that the club are willing, are going to let that happen if they can get the replacement. I think that's the agreement. I don't think they would let him go and then shoot ourselves in the foot, which I'm sure he would understand. But you would imagine the fact that he's left out of the Wolves squad kind of indicates it's probably quite imminent that something's going to happen here. So my gut feeling is, this is just my gut, I think we'll get uh, Keane in. That's my, just, I keep hearing his name pop up. X mentions him all the time. So I'm guessing that, because it seems like a quick replacement ideal, that he's not in the squad at Everton. We can do a loan, quick six-month loan, let Dawson go. It's a quick fix. And I think everyone's a winner, especially you, Riley, because you'll be delighted with that. And then um, uh, Antonio, no, I wouldn't sell at the moment. I think we need him. Again, unless we get a good striker pop in through the door that's similar to Mick. But I'd actually rather keep him for the end of the season. We kind of need the backup and I'd rather just keep him to the end. And then I think well, I'd offload him in the summer if he's unhappy. Because as I've alluded, yeah, as you started this video, why are players at the club that don't want to be here anymore? If they've had enough and they want to move on, it's no good for the dressing room. And I get the pr- impression... Because I do like Mick, but I reckon if, if it goes the other way and he's not happy, I reckon he'd make it quite clear and probably sulk a little bit. I just get that impression from him. Um, so I hope that, you know, I wouldn't want that to happen. And we don't want him leaving under a cloud either. So, yeah, that's where I see it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I completely agree with that, mate. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>